Hello and welcome back. My name is Colton from Ankeny Van Builds and on this week's video I'm going to explain how I set up my electrical system in my vans and if you look behind me you'll notice I've made extreme progress since last week and in this video I'll go over everything that I've done leading up to it because I was filming how to install the ceiling and the walls and a storm started coming through a bunch of wind knocked over a sheet of plywood which then ended up breaking my tripod so I wasn't able to finish filming it, but I'll go ahead and explain everything that I did and talk about some of the issues that I ran into. But first I'll go over the electrical setup and then I'll catch you guys up to where I'm at. So if you haven't already, make sure you consider subscribing down below with the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And if you want to help my channel grow, best way to do that is to leave a comment. doesn't matter what it is and like the video. Anyways, let's go ahead and start this week's video. <laughs> of storms looks like we got one coming through again right now so I'm gonna go ahead and try to hurry up and get this part done but up top we got two 200 watt solar panels from Renogy I installed it by using this bracket and these self tapping screws as well as with the uh, lap sealant so there aren't any leaks but the way I connected it is through these two MC4 uh, connectors which lead into from two positive and negatives down to just one positive and one negative run it through a junction box, which I have a hole cut in the roof, and run the cable through there down into the battery box. So as I was talking about last week, uh, Renogy did reach out to me asking if I wanted to be a part of their affiliate program. I applied and got accepted. So you'll see down below in the description a link to Renogy. If you use that link uh, and use code Renogy10, you'll get 10% off. I'll receive a little bit of a commission from it but that allows you guys to get these solar panels or anything off their website for a little bit of a discount. Clearly, I like using Renogy since I already bought them before I was ever an affiliate program. I've used them on every van so far. So definitely a company I'd stand behind. So if you want a discount, go ahead and use that code. So last week I talked about the pre-wiring. This is where that huge bird's nest of all those cables ran to. This is what it looks like installed. But before I start explaining that, let's continue on with those solar panels. So those wires come through the ceiling runs through the walls out this hole right here comes around to this EC8 to MC4 connection so these the positive and the negative just plug into this which plugs into this wire here it looks like that and then that just plugs right in to the input section and then also this is that 12 volt charger so if the van is turned on it runs into here and it'll start charging the goal zero now in order to get all the power to this fuse block, I have this max output cable. If you were to just use either the cigarette plug, one of these plugs here, or this high output, you'd only get 10 amps. In order to get all 40 amps of output in this whole 12 volt system, you have to use one of these max output cables. That's something I didn't know about at first until I actually started using this thing. But if you want all 40 amps, you have to use one of these max output cables. So this is what it looks like when you first get it out of the box. It has this connection at the end of it and these four on the other end. Now these are kind of hard to find. They're linked on Amazon. They're linked through their website. But last time I checked for a while, they've been out of stock. So I actually had to find these off, like, uh, off eBay or some other trading website. But anyways, what I do here is I cut this top part off right here and it leaves exposed a black and a red eight, eight gauge wire. So I just bought a couple more feet of eight gauge wire. I butt spliced it right here and then I taped it all up so that it's all protected and secure. And then I run that into the positive section of the fuse block down here and then the negative section of the fuse block right here. So when I had that huge bird's nest of all the the cables down here, I had them all taped and labeled. So I brought those over to here. I'll get, I'll transfer these over to something a little bit more cleaner. This was just for me, so I knew what went where. But basically I just labeled each fuse to what it goes to. And you have the positive going into this vertical section here. So you have one of the positives going there and then the corresponding negative 
goes up to the negative terminal terminals up top and that's what allows the power to go from this fuse block through the wires and into whatever system you're trying to power. I found that this setup works out super well and I've uh, always been happy with it. So I got no complaints on this end. And I'll be sure to leave a link to all the ring terminals that I used, all the fuse, the fuse block, everything that you see here, and even all this stuff up here. That way you guys don't have to go search for it yourself. You can just go to the link in the bio. But as you can see over here, we got a 110 outlet in the wall, which I explained how to set up in the last video. This right here is a rocker switch, which will go to all of these down here for this bed. It's gonna have some linear actuators, although I'll do a whole video on how I set that up, but that should be pretty exciting to watch. So this switch allows it to go up, stop in a mid position or go down. Should be pretty sweet. And then under here, we got some USB phone charging ports and the control head for the Webasto. And then coming over to this side, we have the light switch with the dimmer. Again, I'll leave a link to that down below as well. I just need to put the faceplate on it, but that controls all the lights, all these puck lights, 12 volt up above. And then over here in this corner, we got above the bed, a nice little reading light. And underneath that is a USB phone charger. And we also have power set up to our Max Air fan up above. So that's working out real nice. So one more time, just to break it down real simply, we got the power coming from the solar panels, which goes in to this charging port, which charges the battery inside the Goal Zero itself. Then we have the output section of this 12 volt, 40 amp high output cable that goes through this into our fuse block. So that's what powers the fuse block and all of our wires connected into this fuse block then provides power to whatever it is you run your wires to. So that's about as simple as I could possibly explain how this electrical setup works. And then also this battery box down here has a 110 volt, you just gotta hit the button and that turns on the inverter. So then you also have two uh, inverters that can go up to 2000 watts. And then we also have down here uh, different USB outlets in case you wanted to plug something directly in to the Goal Zero itself. But yeah, overall, that's probably one of the quickest and simplest rundowns I can do of start to finish how all this setup works. So as far as electrical goes, that's about where I'm gonna leave it. Uh, for that, I hope that answered your guys' questions if you had any. If you have any more questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. But uh, other than that, I'm gonna move on, talk about the update of where I'm at in this van build. It's coming along super quick. And I'm also gonna talk about what I learned about installing the ceiling and the walls, because there were some hiccups that I ran into that um, I think would be beneficial to tell you guys. So let's go ahead and do that now. So for the ceiling, I ended up using about 16 10 foot boards. Uh, I used pine tongue and groove. I sanded them, stained them, put two coats clear on it. And that's how it ended up looking like this. I tried my best to match the floors and I think I got pretty close. So I'm pretty stoked about it. Now, some of the issues I ran into was this section right here. Um, I couldn't quite get anything to drill through it. I think they use a different type of metal just so you don't go through and hit the track for the door. So with the flare space, it came with a bunch of this auto carpet. So I had a lot of extra of that. So I went, went ahead and upholstered up above here and down the side. I'm gonna put some pieces of trim right here so it's gonna cover all that. This right here is just to cover all the wiring that I have running up. But all in all, I think that auto carpet looks actually pretty clean and I'm happy with how it came out. Now up here for the ceiling, this foam block was in the way quite a bit. So I used a oscillating multi-tool on both sides to cut out where the ceiling was gonna go because before this foam went all the way up touching the ceiling. And what I did here is underneath this headliner, I have these framing pieces and this piece of trim that goes across. I haven't 
Um, I haven't painted this yet. I need to sand down this Bondo that I have in here. What I did is I pocket hole screwed this piece of trim into that framing piece that I have underneath the headliner. So that's what was able to match this curve because one of the biggest differences between the ProMaster and this, these transits are the roof is that the roof really, really caves down when you get down to the front. So if you tried to do it underneath this headliner, uh, your boards would be bent way too far. So, and then again, same thing on this side, cut into the foam once you got over here. Um, so when I had this board in with this piece of trim, I was able to use this as a guide for that oscillating tool to help draw that line. So I knew exactly where to cut so I wasn't cutting too far into it. And installing this flare space trim kit uh, was pretty simple. If you guys watched the framing video, I talked about how I was going to need to add a little bit more pieces uh, for the flare space, and that was real easy. I just had a piece that runs this way and another one that goes straight up and down and all along here. So then it's fiberglass, so make sure I made sure to pre drill through where I wanted those screws to go, uh, screwed it in. And I use some, some more Bondo to help smooth it out. I still need to sand it down and do another coat of paint. So something like this, it'll easily sand down smooth and then I can paint over it and it'll look nice and clean. And so I said I used 16 tongue and groove boards for the ceiling and for the walls I used about 13 12 foot boards and that ended up being, being enough to finish the job. Uh, I didn't need to go back and buy a whole bunch more so so I also have a video on how I installed the shiplap walls for the ProMaster there really wasn't a whole lot different other than working around the flare space but that was real easy you had a big uh, margin of error that you could use for this piece of trim and all in all the ceiling and the walls went in very simply um, so as you can tell this van is coming together super nicely everything's working out great really cruising through it so so there was just a, a quick little update video for you guys. If you found this video, let me know by liking the video. Uh, help me get back on to that algorithm. If I want my channel to be competitive amongst all the other van life channels, I'm going to need your guys' help. Like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any other videos. And other than that, I hope you guys found this helpful. hope you got some value out of it. And I'll see you guys next week. See ya.